Now, after uh, 14 years together, she doesn't need uh, wild cards at all. No. Main, main draw, straight into the main draw. <laughs> yeah, she, she's coming where, wherever she wants. So. How Nadal met his wife, Maria. Who would have thought? Rafael Nadal, the man with a trophy case bursting at the seams, has been playing doubles in the game of love with one stealthy partner, Maria Francisca Siska Perello. But how in the world did Nadal, a titan under the global spotlight, keep his most precious win so hush hush? You won't want to miss the big reveal at the end. Drop your theories below and let's see who's close to cracking the Nadal code. But first, quiz time. What is the term for winning or losing a set 6-0? Is it A, a croissant, B, a ham and cheese toasty, C, a bagel, or D, a dentist? The correct answer will be revealed at the end, so stay tuned, but make sure to share your guesses down below. We'll reply to as many of them as we can. And as always, if this video serves up some tennis joy, volley that like button and backhand a subscribe for more ace-worthy tennis content like this. Who needs Netflix when you've got a love story like Rafael Nadal and Maria Francisca Siska Perellos? It's a tale that could make Cupid hang up his bow and take notes. Rafa, the king of the clay courts, and Siska, the queen of staying out of the spotlight, have crafted a love story so stealthy it could give ninjas a run for their money. Rewind to 2005. Rafa's just bagged his first major title and the world's at his feet. But what do we know about his heart? Art, nada. The guy's as tight-lipped about his personal life as a clam with lockjaw. Enter Uncle Tony, Rafa's coach and the closest thing to a human spoiler alert. In 2008, he spills the beans to the Daily Mail and boy, does he deliver a bombshell. I guess a lot of girls will be upset to know the truth, Tony teases probably chuckling at the chaos he's about to unleash. My nephew always maintained he was single. It was a well-kept secret, but actually, his girlfriend is waiting for him in Mallorca. Turns out, Rafa had been playing doubles with his heart, secretly dating Siska. But who is this mystery woman? now known to the world, but still as mysterious as a locked diary. Siska's no diva draped in designer wear, stumbling out of clubs at ungodly hours. Nah, she's more the type to crush her uni exams, swish through her day job in sports marketing over in London, and still keep her feet so on the ground that not even a pair of Louis Vuittons could lift her. Rafa's buddy, Pedro Hernandez, gives us the inside scoop. He confirms what we've suspected. Rafa and Siska aren't in it for the flashbulbs. Their idea of a perfect evening? Probably something low-key, far from the madding crowd of paparazzi. Now, let's get this straight. Rafa and Siska didn't just accidentally bump into each other in an adult Spanish class. No, their history goes way back to their teen years. In fact, Rafael Nadal and Maria Francisca Perello, also known as Siska, walked the same school halls but sat in different classrooms. The twist is that Siska was a good friend of Nadal's younger sister. It was this connection that brought Rafa and Siska together for the first time in their early 2000s. Fast forward a bit and by 2005, the two started dating sharing those awkward yet sweet moments that come with young love. And while Rafa's been racking up 22 major titles since turning pro in 2003, Siska's been racking up her own kind of wins, like becoming the project director for the Rafa Nadal Foundation. But why the secrecy, you ask? Picture the scene. It's 2008 and Rafa's smashing records. His biceps are as famous as his forehand and his love life? Well, that's in a fortress of solitude. And Siska, she's the fortress's queen, attending his matches incognito, dodging cameras like she's got invisibility on her side. Their love, though, is not about the flashiness, the excitement, or the did you see what she was wearing. It's about two people from a small island sharing big dreams and bigger hearts. It's about Siska supporting Rafa from the sidelines, the silent anchor to his stormy seas. 
Fast forward to 2019, and the lovebirds finally got married. It wasn't a media circus. It was a union that probably had more sincerity than a politician's promise. And to cap it all off, they welcome a baby boy into the world in 2022. A little rapper to carry on the family legacy? Maybe. Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, that kid's got love in his DNA. As for life with the Nadals, it's as normal as life can be when your dad's a sports icon and your mum's running a foundation. There are nappies, sure, but also the joy of those simple, precious moments together, far from the roar of the stadium. So what's on the horizon for Rafa? With whispers of comeback in 2024, it's clear he's not ready to hang up his racket. And Siska? She'll be right there, the solid rock in his corner, cheering on her man with the same fervor she's always had, just without the crowd. In a world where fame can be as volatile as the crypto market, Rafa and Siska's love has been the steady investment yielding endless returns. It's a low-key yet legendary love affair that says you don't need to shout from the rooftops to prove your passion. Sometimes the most profound declarations are the ones whispered behind closed doors in the comfort of a shared life. Rafa and Siska's love story might not have been public, but it's been real, deep, and perhaps that's what makes it so damn special. It's a story of two people who found love not in the limelight, but in the shared shadows of their unpretentious lives. As Rafa gears up for 2024, with the hopes of stepping back onto the court, his game plan isn't just about backhands and baseline rallies. It's about balancing the roles of athlete, philanthropist, husband, and father. With Siska by his side and little Rafa in tow, he's got all the motivation he needs to ace whatever comes next. Now, let's circle back to our trivia question. What is the term for winning or losing a set 6-0? Well, here's the answer. A bagel. And no, not the edible kind. In tennis, when someone wins a set 6-0, we call it a bagel. It's like the tennis score is making a circle, just like a bagel does. Harold Solomon, a well-known tennis player, came up with this fun name, and Bud Collins, a tennis commentator, made it popular. You'll see this kind of win mostly when the tournament just starts. The strongest players often play against new ones or those who get a special chance to join the tournament, called wildcards or lucky losers. There's something even more special called a golden set, that's when a player wins a set without losing even one point. It almost never happens because it's so hard to do. And if we talk about famous players, Bjorn Borg, who won a lot of big trophies, got 20 bagels at the French Open, but only five at Wimbledon. This shows that the type of court they play on can really make a difference in the scores. And that, my friends, is game, set, and match for this episode of Glam Slam Tennis. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a moment of the action and what we have in store.